Hi people, my name is Rafael. I would like to make a video talking about power, especially the power delivered to an inductive load. What is an inductive load? It's a motor of any kind. So let's look at the board. Power, inductive loads. At the upper left corner of the board we have a real representation of an inductive load. Uh, in reality, we don't represent an inductive load only with an inductor because the wires that connect the source to the load have resistance. So we need to put a resistor in series with the load. The impedance of the load is then R plus JXL. It's a complex number that has a real part and an imaginary part. The real part of this complex number is R, which is the resistance of the wires or a resistor that may be in series with the inductor. And the imaginary part of this number is XL. XL is the inductive reactance. Imagine then that we apply a sinusoidal voltage at the terminals of this load. This sinusoidal voltage has a frequency. We represent this frequency by the letter W. The Cartesian form of this load is, this, the impedance of the load is R plus JWL. JWL is the inductive reactance. This is the Cartesian form, but sometimes we just need to deal with the polar form because the polar form tells us about the absolute value of the load and the phase angle. The polar form is then composed of the absolute value and the phase angle. Let's put the voltage at the polar form and the current at the polar form. Our voltage phasor is the absolute value of the voltage in the angle zero. We chose zero because we are going to take V as our standard, as our parameter. And the current is the absolute value of I minus theta. And then you ask me, why minus theta? Why the current has the fa phase angle minus theta? Because let's divide V by I. Uh, by definition, ZL or any impedance is the ratio of voltage and current. If we divide V and I, what we get? The absolute value of V divided by the absolute value of I, 0 minus minus theta. 0 minus minus theta equals theta. This is how we divide phasors in their polar forms. So, if we divided uh, the voltage by the current, we got exactly the representation, the polar representation of the load that we found earlier. We said that the, uh, the angle, the phase angle of the load is positive. It's positive because it's an inductive load. For inductive loads, the imaginary part of the impedance is positive. It gives a polar form with a positive angle. It's inductive. 
if we were dealing with capacitive loads, the imaginary part of our complex number would be negative. And when we translate it to pol the polar form, the angle is negative. So if the imaginary part is positive, the angle of the load is positive. If the imaginary part is negative, the angle of the load is negative. Then we say that when we have uh, an inductive load, the current is lagging the voltage because the angle of the current is negative. It is behind the voltage. If we have uh, a capacitive load, the current is leading the voltage because the angle of the current is positive, is in front of the voltage. To finish, let's look at our power triangle at the upper right corner. P equals S cosine of theta. Q equals S sine of theta. We can see that this is an inductive load because Q is positive. For capacitive loads, the reactive power, Q, is negative. P is the active power, Q is the reactive power. S is the apparent power. What is power factor? Power factor is the cosine of the angle between voltage and current. Or we can say that theta is the angle of the load. Cosine of theta is the power factor. For inductive loads, the power factor is lagging. For capacitive loads, the power factor is leading. All right, this is all I wanted to talk about when speaking about power. You know, I hope you understood everything that I said. And if you didn't understand at first, just see it again. But if you keep on not understanding what I said, Google it and you will find a lot of videos discussing the same question. I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye-bye.